All right, hello, one and all. Welcome back to my Fallout 4 mini series of The Bleachers, a Diamond City story. Where today we are back here in the storage room after taking a good night's sleep here in the sleeping bag. And we are about to uh, head in and have dinner with the gang in the diner. Now, I slept till about 5 o'clock here, so we've got a, oh god, still a good hour to waste before going in there. But, uh, yes, the, hmm, I'm interested why the mission is called Domus Nostra. Hmm, interesting. Well, let's, uh, start heading our way that direction. Actually, though, I did kind of want to look at this. I noticed at the end of the last episode, we have a fault tech uh, box here full of, apparently, deodorant and soap. Of a Vault Tech brand, which is interesting. Vault Stick. <laughs> oh, we can steal it too. Oh my God, does it, it have effects? I don't know. Yeah, a lot of a lot of supplies taken from a Vault. Oh my God, that was full on whiskey. <gasps> oh, but it's steel. I don't want to steal from these people. They're wonderful. All right, well let's roll this way. Oh, good cat. And nice. Uh, Shell of a motorcycle there. Cool. Good times. Can I go in here? <gasps> I can. Haven't seen her room yet. A lot cleaner than the the other two rooms that we've seen. Nice though. I like it. Good little lab set up here. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Ooh. Nice. Oh, terminals. I gotta read through them at some point. I like it. Oh, I love the little library section here. Very cool. She's got her old uh, vault suits there. Time, 5.30. <laughs> We've almost wasted enough. All right, so the one room we haven't seen now is Mr. Dr. Peppers, which I'm intrigued day, for, but, uh, yeah, you're still asleep in here. Aw, love the teddy bear you got. And a gun under the pillow. Probably shouldn't be above her when she wakes up. <laughs> All right, well, I guess let's just kind of do our thing over here. I mean, kind of close-ish enough. I'm assuming they'll all just kind of wander their way over here at about six. So we got uh, 20 minutes left there. How, how you doing, Lily? Having a good, having a good meal? Don't, don't you think you probably shouldn't be eating, though, before a larger spaghetti meal? I'm looking forward to this. I love spaghetti. And apparently, actually, I was... Uh, uh, while off camera, I was just kind of bouncing around doing some other things uh, earlier between the last episode and the one prior to that. One of the uh, loading screens that came up was something about Mom's Spaghetti. Don't remember entirely what it oh, was, it but there are a lot of uh, a lot of little in-jokes in this one. Okay. Almost eight more minutes! <laughs> oh, I should have slept ever so slightly longer. Really do love how this place all looks, though. We got the mixing station, too, if need be. So what do we got? Are they all going to be coming in? Ah, three minutes short. <laughs> yeah, let's just go out here. Look at the look at the signs. More things for Nuka World. Mentat ad. Very cool. Ah, duck and cover. Nice, nice. Yeah, it's six. Oop, didn't mean to close that. Yeah, hey, there we go. <laughs> Alright, take a seat and enjoy dinner, I guess. Cool. Alright, we actually gotta go to the Hello third again. person for this. Good to Yo. see you. Hi there. So, welcome to our, well, whatever you want to call this little weekly thing we have going on here. We just call it dinner night. I do have to say, DP outdid himself this time with this setting. It's usually just the four of us at a booth. Nice. Mm. Looks delicious. Mom's spaghetti smells amazing. Ah, it is the mom's spaghetti. That. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I guess it kind of started as a bored DP talking to me while I ate and he swept the floors after dinner in the evening. <laughs> like a lot of Bleacher's family things in here go, it didn't really start in earnest until Lily swept into this place on our lives. Hmm. She's clearly talented. <laughs> That's one way to put it. Yeah, she's something else, isn't she? She grew up in Diamond City with Zeke and DP. I'm sure she told you that already. Yep. But the Bleacher's district didn't exist back then. Nobody had been in this area of Diamond City in almost two centuries until DP chased that cat in here. So Lily's really taken the bleachers to heart. Between runs, more often than not, she's cleaning the place and making it into a home. Aw, nice. But I digress. Guess I'm just saying Lily makes sure these dinners happen and we're glad for it. She says there's nothing like the family you choose. 
Agreed. Even got it in her head to invite the sheriff one day as a joke. And she showed up. She almost never says anything, but she keeps coming. Well, that's nice. Really? Uh-huh. <laughs> we never expected her to show. DP even had to scramble to get a place set. The look on Lily's face was priceless. Ah. Total shock. I'm glad she did show up, though. We had been trying to crack that ice for a while by then, and she's not the friendliest person in the Commonwealth. The sheriff isn't the type for idle chat, even on these nights, but I can see she values them as much as the rest of us, or she wouldn't keep coming. Very true. She seems a bit rough around the edges. What are you talking about? We haven't met her yet. That would interfere with her duties. Quite the contrary. It helps her maintain an effective force. She's very respected by her troops and a brilliant strategist. She was born and raised Brotherhood of Steel, educated and trained in the pre-war military academy tradition, if what I heard is true. What happened? She didn't see eye to eye with some of their more authoritarian tendencies, and tried to help a town that had water filter tech the gunners wanted. I'm told her squad repelled them, but she lost her whole arm, four knights, and some civilian militia by the time it was over. It was very intense. Costly victory for no strategic gain is the gist of what the Brotherhood of Steel had to say about her decision. She told me herself they made her a scribe and refused to replace the arm. Sounds like a typical boss to me. That's not the half of it. Her entire squad got punished too, every last one of them, bumped down to scribes. For saving some innocent lives. So they did what any principled and strategically minded squad would do in that situation. What did she do? Loaded two vertebrates up with a small plasma arsenal and over a dozen full T-60 power armor units in the middle of the night and deserted the Brotherhood of Steel. No nice. Way. Yep. They stayed under the Brotherhood of Steel radar until they were able to locate the outcasts, a faction of ex-Brotherhood knights who also weren't fans of fascism. She gave them the vertebrates, they gave her an arm and her squad a home and a purpose again. It was a win-win. What happened after that? You mean what happened to the dozen or so T-60s she took with her, right? That's some pretty valuable cargo. Oh, yeah. That gets into how she and the power armor ended up here. That's a long story for another time, and not a particularly happy one. Another fair, time, fair. maybe. Anyway, Lily told me about how you guys went out and saved those dogs. That's pretty amazing anyone would do that in this day and age. People barely help each other, much less dogs. It makes me glad to know they'll be running around the Adam Cat's garage now. No, I know, they should I be happy there. Out. Speaking of doing odd jobs for people... I had a chance to analyze some soil test results, and I've got some work if you're still interested. I very much I'd am. I normally send Lily, but she'll be on that ammonia run that has that motorcycle salvage at the loading dock of Mass Chem we mentioned earlier. We can talk about it after dinner. Sure thing. It's good you showed up when you did. I'd rather not lean so heavily on Lily for my transport jobs. She spends a lot of time on the road already. Good evening, Sheriff. Can I safely assume Lily pestered you today while on duty to tell you about our guest of honor here? Bye! Mm -hmm. She wouldn't be Lily if she hadn't. Yes. Well, this is the person that helped her with that motorcycle and the dogs in that story she's no doubt told you a dozen times by now. Nice to meet you. Okay. Stoic. I like it. Okay. <clears throat> uh, yes. Well, DP has cooked up something special tonight, as you can see. We've got razor green spaghetti, tato sauce, and warm bread. I'm sure it will be fine. So, did you get a chance to see Dr. Scara about your shoulder? You mentioned the adduction was slower than usual last week. Yes. And? And what? And what was the problem? Was she able to fix it? Yes. We hunted down an Assaultron, quartered it with a ripper, and I replaced the glenohumeral joint entirely. That's, uh, good, I suppose. Nice. The gunner squad it came from would argue, if they were still alive. I assume they didn't just want to give a perfectly functional Assaultron to a stranger for free, did they? You don't ask gunners. No, you do <laughs> not. Point. I guess it all worked out. Yes. Did you read Piper's article about McDonough? Yes. And? And what? And what do you think of it? Do you think he's a synth? Okay, okay. Hard to say. Maybe. Dr. Penske told me never attribute to malice that which can be adequately explained by stupidity. Do you think one can be so witless that their unwitting cooperation is so gross and negligent that it can appear to be collusion to an outsider? Or incompetence. Well, yes. Mm -hmm. In this case, incompetence would apply to. I suppose it is possible the witless can be such an unwitting puppet of a hostile power that it can appear like full cooperation. Witless, huh? Nah, I see Let me guess that. which stable genius in a tan suit we're talking about here. Ha! Ah. How's it hanging, bleacher creatures? Yo! Oh, man. That's gonna be some good dinner. 
I mean, it's spaghetti. Hey of course it is. Hey, I'm glad you made it out here tonight. Wasn't sure you'd be up for it since it's such a long haul back from the Adam Cat's garage. I arrived the same time you did. Uh, I'll go positive here. Sure. I enjoy talking with you. You'd be the first. Ha. We spend the last how many years trying to get you to voluntarily open your mouth, and once you do, it's to knock me? Damn. I like the sheriff. Rate, yes, Lily, we were talking about Piper's article on McDonough. That overgrown windbag's a synth, I'm telling you. All wandering around, do doing exactly jack shit up there all day, talking about how busy he is. Unbelievable. You know it's true, Sheriff. You've seen it. I tell you what, wh why don't you march up there in your power armor and throw him off the balcony? Do us all a favor. We've been over this, Lily. Every week we do this, sis. You know what she's gonna tell you. Yeah, yeah, I know. She doesn't do military coups. He ah. hasn't actually committed any crimes. It's up to us at the ballot box. Or, you know, in the dead of night with a sharp blade across the throat? Then we're no better than the Brotherhood. It's not that easy, and you know it. The sheriff can't just go in there and do what she wants. He's got rights until it's proven he's a synth. Oh, it just, it makes me so mad. He's not just doing nothing. He's standing in the way of anyone else trying to do something. Temper. Well, what happens when it's one of us that gets kidnapped, huh? Well, what in the goddamn hell does the Institute want with us anyway? Are people really that scared of the Institute? Scared, if you are, you're confused, sitting angry, with them. Angry, hostile, suspicious, whatever they're feeling about it at the particular time. It's not good. You're the scientist. Why the hell are they replacing us? This obviously isn't a PR campaign. We just end up hating them and since more. They can swarm over this city at any friggin' time with those fucking toasters of theirs, and McDonough will probably open the door for them. I mean, it's you no guys have. Damn sense. I agree, they make no sense. I can't figure out a motivation that squares with the actions they take as a whole. Neither can the sheriff. It's almost like the kidnappings were a poorly thought out plot device wedged into a nebulous story <laughs> by someone who thought it would just work. <laughs> It would be comical <laughs> if they weren't an existential threat. Oh, Who really knows what I love it. the Institute is responsible for. Hmm. You must be new here. Let me clarify. Just about everyone in the Commonwealth knows what they're responsible for. Which is the primary reason we've been monitored. That's enough. Of course. That was careless of me. Apologies. Have we got a plan B? <laughs> As you just heard, I'm not at liberty to discuss plan B. The less you know, the safer you are from the Institute. I you know, am I the got institute. A sucker device. <laughs> Suck what you know right out of there. Read it like a book. I said that's enough. Button it up now, Lily. Right now we've got to stick to Piper's unofficial strategy. We delegitimize McDonough and then get him out of office. Ugh. God damn it! But we gotta do something. What Piper did put time on our side. Every day that goes by, more people think he's a sin, and the less support he has. If the election were today, he'd lose. We've just got to keep the pressure on. Keep pushing for action and answers on those kidnappings. Did your child go missing, ma'am? I'm sorry about that, but I'm far too busy to talk. I'm the mayor, you know, but you have my thoughts and prayers. Hey, DP. Hey, this dinner smells amazing. DP here, he does a killer mayor impersonation. Citizens of Diamond City, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and dogs, Humans and synths. My institute programmers would like me to run a rebuttal software routine and offer a simulated response to Piper's unfounded accusations. And I promise you I will, the moment it finishes loading. Which should be any sec. Ladies and gentlemen of Diamond City, the institute would like me to address. I mean, I would like to say a few things regarding these rumors. My fellow human beings, of which I am definitely one. Since being elected, Despite all of my words, actions, policies, thoughts, and decisions, I assure you, people of name of city, eh. I am not a level 5 institute synth operative with special 4B clearance due to extreme depth of infiltration. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm far too busy doing things that human beings do to do my job and search for missing citizens. I'm the human mayor, after all. End of file. So I heard you guys over here talking about the jackass. Figured we could use a laugh. So yeah, thanks for coming out again, my friends. It's amazing how you always manage to show up for free food. I mean, Tonight, free food does bring people together. Guaranteed to cure weak knees, heavy arms, and sweaty palms. 
Careful, though. <laughs> it may stain your shirt. I baked a well-timed batch of fresh hot bread just for dinner. But the tater sauce tonight is something special I worked on just for the occasion. I gotta tell you, DP, I have never seen a spread like this. You went all out. Looks like the table the companions have in your Vasker Hall in Whiterun. The, uh, the what now? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love this what, mod. a where? Who? I didn't say nothing. But you... I mean, I could swear you just said... Mm, better get your hearing checked, DP. Told you I ain't said nothing. You were gonna tell us about dinner tonight? Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the sauce. Of course. I started with the tato base, of course. But Bob took me through the upper floor of a greenhouse and let me have that. Nice! Oh, it didn't end there, Lily. You know how Wellenham's always got some new spice he's going on about? Or a new dish he wants to try? I remember hauling a bag of behemoth nuts in my power armor for him, so he could make his great green oysters dish. It's called a scrotum, sis. Ew! What the fuck? Ah. We're about to eat! Sorry, just trying to help. Yeah, I bet. Anyway, tell us about the sauce, DP. Where's Wellingham come into this? Please do. Behemoth scrotum. God damn it! You know, now that you mention it, Lily, it is kind of a strangely specific ingredient for a dish. It really is! You see? I'm not the only one who thinks behemoth scrotum is a weird item to have to haul. Huh? What is? The behemoth scrot- A oh, motherfucker! Great! J just great! Now, now I'm saying it! Alright, alright. Where were we? Oh yeah. So Wellham's always gone on about the crushed red pepper the latter and got him a few months ago. So I figured this was a good occasion as any to borrow it. Permanently. Without asking. My man! I like your style. Bob brings one of her nude... 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 Neodymium iron boron. That was my next guess. Anyway, it's a strong ass magnet. Do I, uh, wanna know what sort of strange blood eating plant things you create with powerful magnets in that greenhouse of yours? I would like to know. Hardly. It's to condense iron rich microbeads coated with high avidity molecules based on specific application. Generally, I use it to isolate, purify, and concentrate cellular fractions without the need for larger equipment and refrigeration units. You know, I heard that people in other parts of the world spoke other languages, but I ain't never heard them. Not till you moved here with that technical babble, and then the sheriff shows up with that Latin stuff. Scientia ipsa potentia asked. I don't try to understand neither, Lily. Anyway, she puts this thing on Wellenham's head. He immediately goes haywire. Tripped his Mr. Gutsy switch. But since he's got the wrong hardware, he basically just started screaming, COMMUNIS! And spraying everyone down with his dishwasher jet. Awesome. And Codman runs out of that little corral of the restaurant, screaming her head off. And of course, that dunce husband of hers runs after her. And since it's the Codmans, every security guard is more concerned with kissing her ass and helping than figuring out what's wrong with Wellingham. Typical. Haha, uh -huh. you're telling me. I've been saying it since I saw his mother drop him on his head. That Danny Sullivan kid is as useless as tits on a synth. Long story short, it was just us and a new to Mr. Gutsy up there after a few seconds. I stuffed some spices into my jacket, Bob grabs a recipe box, and we're out of there. Real smooth. I hope. Well, then we'll probably be okay. Last I saw he was asking random strangers to enlist in the army. Hell yeah! Score one more for the bleaches! Thanks. I try. As I was saying, we got some extra kick in the sauce tonight with that pepper. I got some cloves, molasses, and cinnamon, too. So the honey tonight is going to be unlike anything we ever had before. Make sure you get some of that on the bread, too. Really? Nice. Now this I'm interested in hearing. Well, you know ghouls used to live in Diamond City before McDipshit kicked them out, right? It was an extremely short-sighted maneuver. They possess immeasurable knowledge and experience. We could benefit from their wisdom. I agree. I've never been able to talk to more than two in my life. It's amazing what they have to say if you just listen. Scapegoating a fringe minority is a time-honored tradition of weak politicians everywhere, DP. Of course I remember. So I still keep in touch with a few through Doc Weathers. They moved to a big swimming pool facility one of them knew from before the war. Bill was in pretty good shape. So they stayed in that and they farmed some of the best tarberries I've ever tasted out of the pool. Lily here would know who he was. Remember Wiseman and his buddies? Sure do. You know, looking back, it doesn't surprise me he went his own way instead of heading the good neighbor with the rest of the ghouls. Yeah, me either. He had his own ideas of what to do after McDipshit took office. 
and getting pissed off didn't seem to be one of them. Anyway, the short version of that story is the honey has some tawberry juice in it along with the rest of the spices. I think you'll like it. That sounds delicious, DP. Thanks for going to so much trouble. It does hey, sound good. This is a happy occasion. We got a lot of doggos in New Home. At least you got rid of a few more raiders. And don't forget the spices we got. Speaking of raiders, is it true what Lily said? Pop that fucker in the knee and let the dogs finish him off? Yep. Yep. Uh, all of it true. It's the truth. All of it. Damn! Very impressive, Lily. I knew you were crazy, but I didn't know just how crazy you were. I'm glad you did. Even more glad you're on our side. We punched the fuck out of their tickets so hard, their ghosts have gunshot wounds and their cleaned out ghost clocks on their fixed little red wagons. Okay, ah, that's a that's sentence. my girl. <laughs> and Sheriff, you'll be proud to know that axe you gave me? Tomahawk. Thanks for noticing. Anyway, you'll be happy to know that thing can open a raider's brain case easier than it can open a melon. Yes, I know. Hmm. Fine. Fine. DP's being friendly. Uh, DP, how's that thing that makes Nuka-Cola from those big weird bags you got coming? Well, what's it called? The, uh, the... the soda whatever? Fountain. Soda fountain. Well, it's looking pretty good, I think. I'm trying to get a handle on what parts I have and still need. Problem is, all the folks who knew how it worked are long dead. So I'm teaching myself as I go along, which makes it slow. Maybe I can help? Mix the stuff in that bag, mixes it with some of Bob's water, and gives it bubbles? All on the spot, right? Yep, that's exactly what I'm saying. Got a few invoices telling me where more of the syrup is, but it's way over in Nuka World, surrounded by assholes with tiny dicks and big guns. So it makes sense to actually get the machine up and running, and able to use the stock I got on hand before paying someone to get more. I think that sounds like a nice addition to the I mean, I run that place too, yeah, I can get it for you. In more ways than one. I don't have to worry about a steady supply of sealed bottles now. One way or another, the supply of bottles in the area is going to dry up eventually, which just leaves me high and dry with no stock. Too true! But if nobody's touched what's at the factory, and the invoices are right, that's enough soda for years and years. I don't know, that sounds like an awful lot of those bags. It is? But not as much as you'd think. We ain't trying to feed a stadium during playoffs no more. But the sips who filled the order were. There's a lot fewer of us now, and I got a good handle on how many bottles I need a week to keep this place running. Trust me, Lil. There's enough to keep this place running for the rest of our lives. Well, that sounds like some great news for the bleachers in general. It does. Don't upset Wellingham something fierce. Codman's gonna get her ass in a twist, too. Up a stance, just some white picket fence. Anyway, what are we waiting for? Come on, guys, let's eat. Ah, well, that great. is the best plan I've heard all day. And what a day it's been. Sorry about that. We don't mean to cut you out or anything, so uh, dig in. I hope you like it. I ain't seen anywhere serving spaghetti, much less mom's spaghetti. All right. Uh, hmm. I'm gonna go with why do you care? Why is this such a big deal to you? Well, I figured I'd owe you one after that unexpected firefight. I mean, I knew we were getting into trouble at Corvega. Raiders have been there for years. I had no idea what we were getting into in the dog fighting ring. But I mean, it was an easier fight anyway. than Corvega. Made lots of dogs happy today. So what brings you to Diamond City? That pit boy of yours is hard to miss, so I've got to ask if you're from a vault like me. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, revealed my history. I'm from Why Vault not? 111, if that's what you mean. I lived here over 200 years ago. I, I was frozen or something for most of it. Just woke up a little while ago. Would you believe the Institute kidnapped my son? Yes. Yes, I would. Vault Tech did all sorts of unethical and even brutal experiments on their vault residents from what I've yeah, pieced they together. Did. My vault got lucky. As far as I know, they just gave my ancestors the deal they signed up for. It's no surprise at all you were cryogenically frozen. It's a small miracle you're still alive and weren't ground up into food for other residents or some other twisted social experiment. As for your son, that's just what the Institute does. They kidnap us, usually to replace us with a synth, for no logical purpose I can deduce. There is no unifying strategic goal which can be deduced from their actions. It is puzzling. All the same, I'm sorry to hear about your son. I hope you find him. Been there, you done that. Have you to look at that motor you nabbed yet, Lily? Does it look like it still works? 
Oh man, DP, it was better than that. The things never had anything in it but the factory finishing grease. They stored it dry in that case. There isn't a single bit of wear or tarnish on it. I just gotta find a frame and wheels pretty enough for that beauty and it's ready to roll. Now you're talking. All the Matic cats are gonna be green with envy. I asked Rizzo not to tell him. I wanna be there to see the look on Zeke's face when he hears I scored the big one finally. I ain't never seen a working vehicle yet. You be sure to let me know when you take it out for the first time. I wanna be there. You know, I wish I could drive it out there to the cats, but that bike makes me a loud target for snipers and steel cable traps at neck level. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. <laughs> They're gonna cut my fucking head off. I like Gotta you, Lily. Gotta stay inside the fence for now, but I'm not gonna let that stop me from having fun and taking you all for rides. That sounds like fun, once you get good control of that contraption, I mean. Remember, you've never driven one before. I'd think before taking the new one out, you can probably expect to crash a few times before you get the hang of it. Oh, wow. You know, I never thought of that, Bob. You're right. I'm gonna treat the new merch like the jewel it is. At the same time, it means I gotta wait until the rest of the scrap one comes together. Good thing there's one at the Mass Chem Hall, huh? Indeed. Just be careful out there. It's super mutant and raider turf. No sweat. I'm packing light and just checking out the place for this first trip since we got no idea how big this thing is. I'll stay out of sight. You said that Lenny Greaseball sold you the tip about this haul and the bike, right? Yes. His tips have been reliable so far. I agree, I don't trust him, but it's not in his best interest to sell bad tips if he wants repeat business. On the other hand, he's probably sold the information to other parties too. You've seen it happen before. Don't waste too much time getting there. No worries. It's the first place I'm going after I wake up tomorrow. Then I'll go back with the right rig for it. I should beat anyone to the score. You guys all heard about what the Institute did at the Slocum's Joe in Lexington, right? Yes. Well, yeah, of course you know. There'd always been some folks living out of there in the basement. You'd have to be blind not to see them coming and going. No big deal, right? Well, not too long ago, the Institute marched their toasters into the place and wiped them out. They parked their asses in there and ain't moved since. It's weird, right? I mean, what the hell does the Institute want with a bunch of scavers in a burnt-out coffee shop anyway? Lucky you didn't get caught and have your head drilled out for the info. Nah, I was on the freeway overpass to the south. Had to pop a few Raider melons to get the view, but hey, it sucks to be a Raider, you know? Anyway, I wasn't ever within three miles of them, and didn't need to be. They wiped that place out. Dead cold. We That's are efficient. Awful. Has anyone heard what they're doing there? Were they looking for something? No, there, uh, weren't any survivors to tell anyone. I'm really worried about the Atom Cats now. All the way out there by themselves. Between the Gunners and Quincy and the Institute and University Point, they're pretty well cut off from everyone non-asshole in the Commonwealth. We need to find out what they were after at that Slocum's Joe. It could be important. Hmm. We already told you we got no issues with Rizzo moving in with you. If something happens to Zeke and his crew, tell them they can come here. Let them know we'll put them up in the storeroom for a bit if nothing else. We got enough hammocks for them all. Thanks, DP. I'll let them know. I'm sure they can handle themselves against the Gunners, but the Institute? I just don't know. There's so many. Speaking of Zeke and folks who grew up in Diamond City, Lil, you remember me telling you how some Raider gangs took over Nuka World? Yeah, of course. Seems it's all the couriers from out west can talk about lately. What about those jokers? One of them gangs is headed up by some folks we both know. Remember Lizzie, Bill, and Mags? No way. Way. Carla remembered them from years ago when she heard about it. So she made it a point to tell Polly, who made it a point to tell me. I grew up and went to school with Mags and Billy. You ain't never met two bigger spoiled assholes in your life. Ah. Lizzie was more your age, right? Yeah, yeah. She was a sharp one. She always got the best grades in the class, but she knew it. Made for a serious attitude problem. I remember it like it was yesterday. She kept getting bored and causing trouble, so Professor Skara took her out of school and into the lab. All Lizzie did with that training was make high-grade chems and get blasted on them. Too bad, really. What a waste. Mags, too. She used to babysit me before she turned into an asshole. I mean, she was an asshole back then, too, but nobody cared because we were kids. Professor Scarra told me about her once. That was her assessment as well. 
Lizzie could have done some truly great things, but had some serious demons. Did she tell you why the three of them ain't in Diamond City no more? She didn't mention that, no. You see, these kids were Upper Stands kids. Their families have money. It's just that Mags and Billy thought it was their money too. But the parents weren't dying fast enough. So they got tied up in some organized crime they couldn't handle. A lot like Nelson Latimer. I'm assuming it had to do with chems. Because they brought Lizzie in on it too. Lily wasn't lying about that girl being smart as fuck. Suffice to say, they got cut a lot of slack for a long time because of the family names. But eventually it got larger than even they could contain. You do gang business inside the city walls, and someone's gonna get killed. Except this time was an innocent girl named April. April and me, we were good friends. I'd have killed those three on the spot if security hadn't gotten to them first. I believe it. She's not kidding, Bob. They literally had to put Lily in a holding cell for their protection. I saw it all. It took three guards to hold it down. Anyway, it seems caps by justice in the wasteland, too. Because these kids got exiled instead of rotting inside a jail cell. Yeah, of course they did. They kept did. Lily locked up for a fucking week to give those three enough of a head start that she couldn't track them down and kill them. So much for Commonwealth justice. Wasn't long enough of a head start. I know where they are. Now. Yeah. At the head of a gang big enough to take and hold Nuka World. Patience, Lil. If that gang doesn't eat him alive, you will one day. You're goddamn fucking right I'll eat him alive for what they did to April. I'll be the last fucking thing those assholes see. Ha! <laughs> hey, shoot Billy in the nuts for me while I can still feel it, could you? <laughs> now there's a thought I can get behind. You make a decision yet about taking over responsibility for that shit shack of a greenhouse across from Cronus Place down on the field, Bob? I have, yes. I was flattered Geneva asked me to handle it, but I took some soil samples down there. It didn't look good. But to be more accurate, after generations of growing the same crop and being sprayed down with the swill that Kowalski calls water, it's hopeless. There's nothing safe about that soil or anything that would leach into it from the immediate area. The place is completely contaminated. Yikes! Me and Lily grew up eating that grub. Makes me glad I import from Abernathy Farm for the diner. Turning over the soil won't help none, huh? Not really, given the surrounding soil and the continued use of Sheng's poison. The new topsoil layer, if not already contaminated, soon would be. I just don't have the time to rehabilitate that place. I'm not sure if I want to expose myself to that kind of radiation cleaning it up, either. Probably wouldn't well, be a good idea. City, good luck with that place. I, for one, was very glad you moved into the bleachers. That news just makes me even more glad. Thanks, DP. It's too bad, really, but my own work is far more important to feeding the entire Commonwealth. I can't lose sight of the larger goal. People like you are going to help bring us out of this McDonough Dark Ages we're in. That's for sure. Uh, you got like some sort of giant mega brain or something? You sure you ain't a robot? So I heard something from Polly, who heard something from Myrna, who heard something from Carla the other day. Oh yeah? What happened? Carla was coming down from Sanctuary, and she usually steers clear of Concord. What with the Raiders and shit. I guess she saw something down in Concord with those binoculars of hers that made her take a second look and go into town. From what I hear, the place was basically a slaughterhouse. Every last one of them Raiders was dead in the street, full of holes that cut to pieces. Yeah, they Damn. were. I mean, that's good, but wow. What could have done that? Power, Yo, over here. a minigun, and a death claw. That yeah, me? yeah. Polly said Carla saw a dead Deathclaw there. You heard it too, huh? You know, one of these days, you're gonna have to tell me how you know so much. Oh, wait, let me guess. One of your scouts saw it. No. Haha, <laughs> forget it, Lily. You're soon to get a mutant hound to loosen its jaws. Hmm. Anyway, Carla said some folks had moved into Sanctuary way up north by the Red Rocket after that. Said they were a real weird crew. They are. Some guy who looked like he wanted to die. His whole hobby bitch of a wife. And some old bat they kept feeding Quailus to so she'd shut up. Carla told her there was another guy up there who kept asking if she or anyone else he happened to see if they wanted to be leader of the Minutemen. Imagine the desperation. It sounds like he's either a few fuel rods short of a reactor, or the Minutemen have ended up in some seriously bad shape, even in this world. It is sad. The people of the Commonwealth will never truly rebuild until they take it back from their fear of the dark. When either DP or I leave the city, we have to book protection with one of the caravans. We're not fighters like you three. Vault 81 isn't terribly far away, but it might as well be on the other side of the Commonwealth for a scientist like me. I'd die without protection. All the Minutemen wanted was to organize the people to make that trip safe again. She's right, you know. 
We don't want to be delivered at the hands of the BOS. I've seen it before. One thing I learned real quick about Bob is that she's pretty much always right. Indeed. It's not something one wants to think about, but I haven't heard much about them in a while. Certainly not since the Quincy Massacre. I've been rebuilding them. If they truly did get stamped out, root and stem, we won't see anything like them in our lifetimes again. That walk to the vault will never be safe. Oh, don't get me wrong, Bob. I agree with you. Diamond City would be filled with suit mutants if it wasn't for the Minutemen. I'm really hoping this guy was just a nutcase and isn't the last remaining one after Quincy or something. But things are pretty bad out there right now, and nobody's heard a peep. Which makes me think he's either telling the truth, or there's nobody left. And on the other side of the cap, you get people like Lily here, going around poking at radar hives, killing them wholesale and pissing them off. Hey now, we don't take killing raiders lightly. Oh yeah? How many of you ice in just the last two days then? Give me a number. A fair uh... few. Uh, but that's exactly my point. Raiders may deserve what they get, but a desperate one that's just had his whole clan aired out is even worse. So I don't have an issue killing murderers, rapists, and animal abusers. So me. Not like I have a problem with it either. I wouldn't stop you from doing you, Lil. You wouldn't be the same. It's not like you could stop me anyway. There ain't a soul in the Commonwealth that could stop you, Lily. That I probably could. For certain. Not even a behemoth scrotum could stop her. God damn it! I thought we were past that. No, I'll be holding that over your head for a good long while. Pretty sure a behemoth scrotum isn't something I'd want hanging over my head for any length of time, Lily. Oh no. Ugh, all green, hairy, and slimy like that? The smell alone would kill most things. Did it smell bad, Lily? Ew, fuck. I give up. I can't. I can't eat anymore. What the hell is wrong with you people, huh? You all on day tripper or something? That's a yes if I ever heard one. Speaking of things that make us all hungry, I have to hand it to you, DP. You prepared an excellent meal tonight. This honey was a real treat. Thank you very much. But I'm full. The hour's getting late, and I've got some samples incubating, which means I've got yet more work ahead of me. It's not every day something like this happens in the Commonwealth. It was a good reason to celebrate. You have a good night. See you tomorrow, Bob. I've had a pleasant evening, everyone, as always. Thank you for your company tonight. Sleep well. I'll likely see most of you tomorrow. Night, Later, Max. Ducks. I'll check out that hole tomorrow for you. I've got work to do as well. Good night, everyone. Thank Later, you for Sheriff. the dinner. It was very good. Of course, Sheriff. Have a good night now. Night, Sheriff. I think I'm going to retire, too. Got at least one round trip to make to Cambridge tomorrow. Hey, you be careful up there, Lily. A lot of raiders up in Monsignor Plaza would love to get a hold of your jacket. Maybe even you personally by now. <laughs> yeah, we kind of did make a name for ourselves this week, didn't we? We Couldn't did. agree more. I did good work, didn't I? That's what I'm talking about, you two. You just ventilated a bunch of raiders for a motorcycle and something that they were making money off of. These guys ain't all dumb. Some of them make power armor out of trash. They'll know who did this. They're not the type to forgive and forget. Jeez, yes, mother. Anyway, that's me for the night. Hey, thanks for coming out. I hope you like dinner. I'll see you around. Night, Lily. Night, Lily. Night, Lily. Well then. Looks like that's dinner, huh? I hope you liked it. I served both the spaghetti and that honey here if you're interested in more. If you'll excuse me, I got a lot of cleaning to do before I can close up for the night. You take care, my friend. Of course. And you too. Holy crap, that was long, but awesome. <laughs> that, um... Huh. Yeah, let's just stand up there. That was a whole lot of information and lore, and I really got to hand it to the mod makers on just all the dialogue and voice acting that had to go into that. But, uh, yeah, that is going to be it for this episode. Let's see. Dinner is concluded. Quest will complete when you leave the Left Field Diner. Don't forget your two new cola mixes on the table. Ooh. Yoink. Awesome. All right, well, let's just leave out into here to uh, end it. Ah. There we go, completed Adamus and Nostra. So yeah, that is going to be it then for this very long and very lore-heavy episode, but it was quite cool. Hope you all have enjoyed it. You do come back for the next, but until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one.